Good afternoon. We have Marcus Wolfinger, the Chief Executive of Stratec SE, a German company specialising in the production of high-end instrumentation for diagnostics companies. Uh, firstly, could you please describe the three business units of instrumentation, Diatron and Smart Consumables? What do they do and how do they differ? The, the historical business when Stratec is coming from that business is actually development and manufacturing of equipment for more like centralized labs, bigger laboratories, blood banks, etc. cetera. Um, and this business is actually to include the consumables, the relevant consumables, um, maintenance parts, bears, is all covered under um, our instrumentation business unit. Um, after we acquired Diatron back in 2015 with a fairly high brand recognition in the direct sales, um, we thought that we could move our more like off the shelf business, which is actually from instrumentation perspective, minor and private label deals all to under the Diatron brand name and move the, the OEM business slightly away from Diatron, which means in the meantime, instrumentation is an, um, uh, an OEM development and manufacturing um, business unit on a standalone basis. And Diatron is doing the same thing for instruments, which tend to be smaller. Um, so more like instruments for uh, like general practices or smaller labs. Uh, mainly in hematology, clinical chemistry, to a certain degree molecular. Um, and those instruments are actually designed and manufactured um, under our uh, Diatron brand name, which is mainly a question of market perception, of brand recognition, and certainly with the development and manufacturing capabilities we have in Hungary, uh, compared to those ones um, in, in Germany and Switzerland. So we think more on a like modular level for our instruments um, designed and manufactured uh, through our Diatron business unit compared to Stratic instrumentation, where we typically have a 100% design depth, but uh, outsource manufacturing on a module level to qualified suppliers. And we only do uh, final assembly and final testing in our factories in Switzerland and Germany. Uh, smart consumables, um, uh, like I mentioned, and then I think it's important to differentiate between what consumables for, for Stratec actually means. Uh, so typically we are talking um, about service parts to include spare parts to a certain degree. Certainly the most important element is maintenance parts and to a certain degree consumables, more the classical consumables, um, like pipetting tips or cuvettes. All those elements and, and certainly our clinical chemistry and hematological reagents we are selling through our diatron business unit are all covered in the relevant business units, which means a consumable running over an instrumentation um, uh, uh, instrument and in, uh, uh, an instrument coming from our instrumentation business unit, there the consumables are accounted under the instrumentation business unit. Smart consumables. Um, is a business unit uh, we uh, acquired, which is the former DADC Bioscience business, uh, again, back in 2015. Um, when we clearly saw a certain shift, particularly for smaller instruments in complexity away from the instrument and more into the consumable. And as we said, we want to participate in the same level in the in the value chain, um, it's, a, it's a good idea and it's, it's really started pay, uh, paying dividend now um, to invest into more complex consumables. Here we are talking about polymer-based consumables, several plastics parts combined, often microfluidic combined, several process steps on one cartridge or chip. And um, we had a few products prior to the acquisition uh, a, few, a few projects where for the same customer, Stratic Instruments um, supplied the instrumentation and Stratic Smart Consumables under the umbrella of Sony at the time, um, designed and manufactured the Smart Consumables. And after the uh, acquisition, we got um, uh, several new products on board where Stratic is now in charge for the supply of the instrument and for the supply of the Smart Consumable. Uh, we have several bigger projects in the pipeline. Um, again, this is still in the transition and ramp up phase of Stratic Smart Consumable. So we are 100% convinced that although 
uh, Stratex mod consumable is, is, is about to break even, that uh, this will be an, an EBIT margin accretive business unit in the future, let's say two to three years from now. Um, and um, uh, this is actually something where we really believe that uh, um, some elements of the future growth of Stratec is lying in this smart consumables business unit. Could you tell us how each of these units has been affected by the sudden increase in COVID-19 testing? What happened is that some of our businesses saw significant tailwinds through COVID-19 testing. So if I'm talking about our most, and here I'm differentiating at a later point between diatron and, in, and instrumentation, our most important technologies are certainly molecular diagnostics. Um, actually, in both Diatron and Stratic instruments, we have several instruments which are getting tailwinds from COVID-19 testing because the majority of those instruments are uh, PCR-based instruments or relevant alternative molecular um, uh, amplification methods such as TMA from Hologic, the, from the former general business of Hologic. Um, certainly both business units are affected positively through a number of instruments seeing significant tailwinds here. Then our uh, second most important technology is certainly uh, immunoassays and here chemiluminescence immunoassays. Um, instruments we have such as for Siemens or for uh, Diasorin and uh, several others. Here definitely we saw and see, still see um, nice tailwinds, but I think the biggest tailwind will, will only happen as soon as we have proper vaccination, have to do antibody testing um, in order to differentiate previously infected people from, and I don't need to tell you the entire story. I think particularly in our chemiluminescence immunoassay business, we believe that uh, the big, the, we, we see growing demands and higher demands, but I think we have not yet peaked out or are getting even getting close to that peak coming from that element. Then our uh, third most uh, important business unit is, and a business is certainly a head to head hematology and um, immune hematology, both showing nice performance, like we dipped slightly in immune hematology in the second quarter, but are now um, in recovery mode. Hematology went way better than expected, particularly our reagent business and particularly our uh, veterinary hematology business uh, showed some nice growth rates. And the only thing where we are south of um, uh, uh, the budget is, is actually um, our uh, clinical chemistry business. Uh, clinical chemistry is allocated under diatron. Some of our molecular business is allocated under diatron. The majority of our molecular business is allocated under um, the um, uh, uh, instrumentation business unit. Smart consumables, as we don't have a smart consumable doing, doing COVID-19 testing, um, is running flat because all our expected business is coming in as expected. We see here and there some delays as far as our development projects in instrument, uh, sorry, in our smart consumables business unit is concerned. But I, I'm, we are actually fairly positive and we had recent communication with, the, with the, the management of our smart consumables business unit that we will get back to plan by the end of the year. So I think all in all, some business units showing nice growth. The other, the other businesses unit, business units are actually particularly towards the end of the year um, are within the expectations we have in our budgets. Um, on a technical accounting point, uh, you do distinguish between systems, service parts and consumables, uh, as well as development and services in, in the accounts. Could you tell us a little bit about that distinction and which one generates the highest adjusted EBIT and cash? So certainly, um, and I mentioned that before, historically the biggest proportion within the relevant reported um, elements is definitely instrumentation with instrument sales. So when I can only talk about a typical year because we are actually facing a couple of uncommon years and we actually had a couple of uncommon years, but in, an, in a typical year, we would say we have about 55% um, of, our, of, the, of the business generated um, is actually coming from instruments. 
Then about 35% is actually coming from um, what we call service parts. And again, consisting out of spare parts, highly unpredictable, but good margin. Then certainly maintenance parts, good margin. Um, and uh, certainly consumables depends on the project with a fairly good margin. Um, in certain areas, in other areas, we still have room for improvement. Um, and again, the different elements of consumables are reported in the relevant uh, business units. Like, again, let me pick out the example again. If we have a consumable running on an instrument which is sold by the business unit Stratic Instruments, the relevant consumables are reported under that relevant business unit. Um, at this point, certainly, um, the, 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 that business which has the highest element of recurring business is definitely our consumables uh, business, uh, currently generating the highest margin in the group. Um, and in a typical year, we have about 10%, um, 10 to 15% um, of um, in, in breakdown of revenues coming uh, from our development activities. And again, particularly IFRS 15 is leading to high volatilities here, has nothing to do with the actual um, performance um, in the development departments. It's just related to a milestone and, re and revenue recognition derived from milestones. And that's why one good example was actually the year 2019, when in the second quarter, we had a big milestone payment, which directly uh, was recognized in revenues derived from the status of the actual project um, and had a huge uh, additional revenue coming from that. And in the four or five quarters prior to that event and in the two or three quarters after the uh, event, we certainly had higher performances in those departments, but couldn't recognize the, re uh, the revenues. And that's why we see some increasing uh, volatilities in the revenue recognition of our development activities. But I think the way how we are showing that it gives a good degree of transparency of um, is this in line with the performance under the relevant quarter or is this uh, like an, a positive or negative outlier? And uh, like if you just see the development in the year 2020 with an underperformance of recognized revenues coming from development activities. However, we have the highest um, um, uh, uh, development activities we had in the company's history. Uh, again, we hire 10% more engineers and software developers and they are contributing to the relevant uh, uh, products in the development pipeline. However, we cannot recognize the revenues because it's not the right phase of the project. I think the way how we are showing that in our in our reporting structure gives um, a high degree of transparency to our investors to actually see w what's common and what's more or less uncommon. Could you tell us about Stratex's strong IP position and how it works with innovative companies like Conterix? Absolutely. So. Um, first of all, please allow me to say that whatever we do um, as far as intellectual property rights and the, the related know-how is concerned, we always do this in the light of that we want to guarantee our uh, partners freedom to operate in those fields they are operating. So we do not file patents in order to protect our turf or uh, to help our partners to differentiate from other partners or their competitors. Um, so our activities are in the light of guaranteeing freedom to operate. What we typically do in a typical contractual setup um, is that whatever has been brought to the table by the relevant partners, so Stratec and the relevant partners continues to be their intellectual property right, which means we are investing about 50% of our R&D budget into the development of our own technologies. And if we have our own technologies, we bring those to the table and they continue to be ours. The same applies for our partners, um, which means that if they have their essay technology or workflows, it's all theirs and continues to be theirs. If we make amendments or derivatives to their technologies, it continues to be their technologies. If we do it to ours or they do it to ours, it continues to be 
our technologies. And if we invent something under a program in common, we typically um, are talking about uh, vice versa licensing or shared IPs, whatever the appropriate measure of the contractual setup is. Um, it, it is extremely important for us to invest the money because um, that's actually how we differentiate ourselves and are actually positioning ourselves. Typically, we do not start our development and manufacturing programs from stretch. We start on the basis of existing technologies, which might be related to liquid handling, um, to components, to software libraries, to um, uh, special processes, to increase dynamic ranges, or and so on. So that's where we typically have our intellectual property rights. And that helps us to position ourselves in a way that we are not getting in the position where a contract developer or a contract manufacturer is, is that in the contractual setup, we are typically positioning ourselves as owner of pre-existing technologies. Our partners are paying kind of entrance fee, allowing us to customize our technology according to the mutually agreed upon specifications, which means we continue to have ownership in the final products, although our partners are getting their exclusive derivatives of their technologies. They own everything which is related to the chemistry, to the processes, to the essays, and we own the things which are related to actual instruments and the relevant consumables, if applicable. That's the way um, how we split up. It's, it is extremely important for us, particularly in the light of our business model, that we do not want to position ourselves as contract developers or contract manufacturers. We see ourselves more as a company having the intellectual property rights needed, that we customize our products based upon those intellectual property rights, which helps us in the future sales of the products, that we have this exclusive vice versa relationship with our partners. They get their exclusive instruments, but as a trade-off, they have to buy the instruments exclusively from us. Finally, Stratec paid 10.1 million in dividends in June, but also has an increasing use of bank finance in the quarter for working capital. Do you see cash generation rising? Absolutely. First of all, our, our dividend policy is definitely, I think we paid dividend for 14 or 15 consecutive years now. And uh, even in a situation of weaker years, we don't want to jeopardize our reputation to have growing dividends. And that's why um, particularly if we have a, a weaker year like we had in 2019, and we, 19, we already saw the prospects of 2020, 2021, 2022, when we have new product launches, uh, ramp up of certain products when we knew that um, uh, even in weaker years, we can afford to pay higher or growing dividends because we will have stronger years and had stronger years in the pipeline at the time. And that's why our dividend policy is definitely to keep the dividend growing. On the other side, um, certainly uh, 20. 2019 in 2020 has been very exceptional years. Um, like we took the decision uh, to um, uh, uh, put more working capital in inventory at the beginning of the COVID crisis because we knew that we have growing run rates, that we knew that we were probably uh, facing issues with supply chain. And therefore, it already started paying dividend to say, okay, we are trying to increase our inventory, which typically costs us, uh, 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 um, actually show some scratches in the working capital. The same applies for real estate, uh, uh, real estate activities we have here in our headquarter that we uh, spend about 20 millions in the last two years for a, a new development or a building um, to increase our development activities. And all those things certainly didn't show the, the relevant picture as far as cash flows are concerned. However, the situation already significantly improved after six months. And um, we will actually see the same positive development after nine months and are expecting nice cash flow development uh, on a full year basis. When, uh, like I said, I think the last two years and the next two years will be definitely exceptional if we are trying to compare KPIs to include cash flows.